What's going on, everyone? Shalon Winter here, aka Futures Sniper Beast. So today is a review video of the trade that I made this morning, and it is a CPI day. So Wednesday, 9-11, September 11th, and I'm going to go over the review. Um, I had a really good read this morning. It was a very easy trade. I'm going to show you how I hit the low-hanging fruit, got in, got out, took profit, and I uh, had a really good day. I added some more fresh funded accounts to my uh, portfolio of funded accounts with Apex. So that makes 16 total PAs. So I added a whole bunch of them. And uh, now those are up as well. So whenever you leverage and you have multiple accounts, I mean, the profits add up. They get, you know, they start, you start seeing a lot of profit across all of them together. And... So I'm going to go into that, but also I want to kind of let you know on a video I'm going to put out here soon, probably within the next couple days, um, I have a kind of what I'm doing that's helped my my discipline, helped my trading in general. And that's, I want to show you how I journal, how I do my reviews, and how I keep track of everything. So I hit on it a little bit on the Trader Bacon Show whenever I did my interview on there with them. That was great. And if you haven't seen that, go ahead and hit that uh, button where you can go back on my channel and watch that video. Watch that. That was a good one. <laughs> so do that. And like I said, I'm going to go into more detail, though, of exactly what I use, how I do it. And it, I think that'll be good. That'll help a lot of people. So that since I've been doing that, that's when I've been consistent. So. Without further ado, I don't want to hold up anymore because I know you're here to see the trade review. So let's go ahead and hop in the charts. But first, make sure you like, subscribe, and share this video. All right, let's jump right in. All right, so here we are in the charts. Now, this is the recording from this morning that I traded. So I'm going to go through here and I'm not going to play the audio because I'm just going to kind of skip through, get to the good points and kind of narrate what I was looking at and what I was looking for. So I'm going to start off by this is the 15 minute chart. What I'm doing is I'm marking out my levels like I normally do, um, marking out the new day opening gap. I mark out the highs and lows for the daily, the daily chart for the last three days. And I mark out the London session high and low. So I want to know all those. All right. So I, I do that. And then let's see if we can jump forward here a little bit. Let me move me out of the way. I'm always in the way on these. <laughs> all right. So I guess I could fast forward it by 30 seconds. So here we are. I'm analyzing this 15 minute chart. Okay. So what I'm noting is that price could come down, well, specifically down to this area, potentially down further. So the reason why is we have, if you're looking at the 15 minute chart here, this is where price is, right? So what do we have? We have uh, CPI, ran down, ran out all these lows here. We have an old opening range gap from yesterday, actually that it did not get filled. It went down to the middle, the consequent encroachment, went down to the middle, never filled it. But you see this shaded area right here? That's a volume imbalance from the daily chart. Right here is a volume imbalance also from the daily chart. Let me pull that down here and let me show you. So we have the daily chart here, okay? Here's a volume imbalance. And then here's the volume imbalance. That's where we were. And what I'm looking at on the daily chart, we have this fair value gap right here, right? So, and then we have an inverted one. So price did this run up. As you can see, we came down, ran up. We do have this gap here. We do have this volume imbalance here that price went into and closed basically right at the top of that there. And then from there, it ran down. It did this, ran down, 
we had this volume imbalance here and then we made this low and look what price did displace through this low right we had this open volume imbalance here so price went through it there displaced through inverted this fair value gap and left a new one there okay so then price kept digging down digging down and i personally believe we're going to end up seeing this low down here taken at 739 area. Let's see what that exact price level is. 745. And then this long-term low down here. I believe we're going to 736. We're going to come back. I believe we're going to come down to this area. Okay. So as we're making, because we're, we're in a, a bearish run now. But we got to get to a certain eventually it doesn't mean it's gonna go straight down there right now it could doesn't mean it will so as i'm looking price is doing this little retracement back up so my job is to see where is price drawing to okay so what i like to do on the daily chart because i only trade a small session the morning session um right after the open that's it so i'm not looking at these big time frames that you know if i look at the daily chart and say oh well it could draw all the way up here well, it could take multiple days. That doesn't mean I can't take a short or a long on a 15-minute, you know, bias looking at a one-minute chart, right? That doesn't mean. But if you know where price is going, then you can trade it accordingly. So price is pulling up. And then I see, because because earlier we were down here, right? So we were down here. We have a volume imbalance right here. Right here, volume imbalance. So I note that. And it's inside all these new day opening gaps from last week. So likely prices to trade up here. We also have this volume imbalance down here. Right here. And then right up above it, we have this daily fair value gap. So price could, and there's, and if you look right here, we have a little bitty volume imbalance right there as well. Right there. So price could trade up in here and then I wait. Will it trade up in this area and then come down? Or will it trade up here and continue up to this uh, daily fair value gap? Okay, and then these new day, opening, new day opening gaps here in this area. And then if you look higher, well, if price does keep drawing up, look at, the, look at this smoothness right here. Look at all that buy side liquidity. Doesn't mean it will go up there. But it could come up there. So we wait and see, right? So then you can, you know, if you really want to look, you can go looking at the higher time frames, the weekly chart and whatnot. Uh, I notice instantly, if I look at the weekly chart, we have a volume imbalance right there of the weekly chart. And that's where, pretty much where those highs were. See, this is 5.96. Oh no, that's higher. So, I don't really get too caught up into that long term, but what I do want to see is these levels. Okay. So I saw that volume imbalance. So that's what I want to point out because on the video here, that's what these are. So I want to see if price is drawing up, right? If price is drawing up, which it is, it's going up. Where's it drawing to? Okay. Well, it could hit this volume imbalance and then come down, or it could go all the way up through all those, and then come down, I still believe price is gonna come down through this low. Because now we do have a bit of sell side liquidity here. We have uh, this volume imbalance down here, these opening range gaps that haven't got filled. So very well could come down in this area. So let's see what happens. So I'm still marking out some of my levels here, and this is what I'm going over in my video to myself i'm looking for where could price draw because remember price is 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 drawn to imbalances and liquidity liquidity could be at above your highs and lows and your imbalances will be the fair value gaps or daily or volume imbalances and um it'll draw that's where it's gonna go so price has drawn up into this volume imbalance up here now i see this um 15 minute fair value gap there, right? So um, on the one hour chart, because there's also one hour gap there, because whenever you see multiple gaps in a row, usually the higher time frame is going to have 
you know, a, a, a fair value gap there as well. So now here on the 15 minute chart, I mark out this one because we have a few bars in a row that left this big fair value gap here, right? And price drew up to here, up in this area, which is that volume and balance. So I wanna see, is price gonna show me, is it gonna show me that it's willing to come back down to this area and then go up and take this out? Or is price gonna go out, uh, you know, all the way up here and take, fill in those volume imbalances on the daily chart and then come down this way? So I'm looking to see which, ways, which, which way is that gonna happen first? Because you see with CPI, this wick, it wicked right down here into this 15 minute fair value gap, right? So wick down. And then it's coming up into here. So now my job is to wait and see where price is being drawn to. Okay. So let's fast forward a little bit here. So now we have this 15 minute fair value gap that I mark right here because this is right at the open. And since we opened and ran right up into this daily volume imbalance, I want to see what happens to this 15 minute gap. Does this get inverted? If this gets inverted, I have no doubt. We're going to run down into this area and down into this uh, volume imbalance here. And if we do, then I am looking at, well, where could price go? Price is either going to stop in this area and go up and fill this area up high, or it's going to run down to that sell side liquidity area that I mentioned down here and then go back up and fill the volume imbalance. But if that's my anticipation, then now I know how to trade it, right? Because if in the first example, if it hits this volume imbalance and then inverts this gap and I know it's going to come down here, at that point, I can drop down to my one minute, wait for a market structure shift, wait for my entry and take that down to this area. If I don't get an entry, then I just let it draw, let it draw, let it draw, let it draw down until it either hits this area and then I look for that market structure shift on the lower time frame, my entry to go back up. If I don't get it here and it keeps drawn down, then I just wait till it hits this area. And then I look for that, which by the way, it did happen. But I took my trade in this short coming down here. And I only still, I go for the low hanging fruit um, because I'm still not right now sitting in trades and holding them for one, two, 300 point runs. My trades usually go 35 to 60, 70 points. And I have 16 PA accounts with Apex, like I said at the beginning. So you multiply 50, 60 points across 16 accounts, you're having a pretty good day, even though I trade micros. So let's see what happens here. Fast forward, fast forward, fast forward. And I'm really working on trying to make these trade reviews quicker. <laughs> under 20 minutes. I really wish I could do them around 10 to 15. So I just don't want to miss anything. You know, I, I don't want to miss anything. I know sometimes I could talk too much. So now what I'm, I'm noting here on the five minute, which I'm not too concerned about the five minute, but I'm noting that we have a 15 minute gap here. And then there's also a five minute fair value gap there. We did invert it with this displacement down right here. It's displacing down closed underneath this. So this five minute gap is an inversion fair value gap. And when we may be creating a fresh one, a, a bearish one. And uh, so that'd be a Sibby to go down. So now I'm back to the 15. I'm kind of noting this and it's happening pretty quick. So now I drop down to the one because I want to see that 15 minute gap, fair value gap get inverted. Okay. So now you see a little small fair value gap right here, right here. And I'm about to mark it and you see price. I mean, it takes all these lows right here, right? Price took all those lows, left this gap. So technically, yeah, you could have got in right here, had a better entry, smaller stop right at this high. Okay. I didn't take it. Why? Cause I want to see this 15 minute, Fair value gap get inverted first. I want to see that get inverted because that's going to tell me we're going to run way down. We're not just going to stop somewhere and it be a 15 minute wick down and go up. 
I want confirmation. Because there's gonna be because if that happens, if what I'm expecting happens does happen, we have a long way to run down here. And I could take an entry anywhere in this area. Because I have a target and I know where price is going. When you have a target, that's all that matters. When you know where price is going. So now I'm looking here. We may get a fair value gap right here. This would be another inversion right here. You have this one and inverted this one that went. I didn't mark it. And then you created this new one here. So what I'm looking at is now we're getting to where we're, I think when this bar closes, this 15 minute gap would be inverted. Um, it's one somewhere in that area. But I'm looking at that as, all right, now this one's good. Price, when we come back up here, I'm allowing price to trade all back up in this area. So if I take some heat while I'm in the trade, I'm okay with that. But it should not come back above this high here. Okay. So let's go forward. It's bouncing right off the London high. see fast forward a little bit now what i'm doing is i'm looking okay if i'm gonna take my trade here where do i want to exit what's my low hanging fruit because i always know before i get in a trade where my stop's gonna be where my target's gonna be always i always i don't get in a trade and say uh, maybe go to here might go to these lows might go no so what i'm gonna do is you see me throw this fib on here I'm measuring this, this dealing range right here. This range, we got this high and this low. This purple line right here is equilibrium. You see the 50% right here. Look where the bodies close. <laughs> it's magic. Okay, so my objective, the low hanging fruit is the, I wanna take my trade from a premium market up here and I wanna get out I want to sell the premium and get out, buy back in a discount, right? That's what you do and vice versa. You want to buy in a discount and sell in a premium. So if my entry is right here in the premium, my objective, my low hanging fruit is to get out at the first liquidity or imbalance after the 50% mark in the discount, okay? So what I'm looking at here is I instantly notice this one right here. So that to me right away is gonna be a target right here. So that's where I'm targeting. And you'll see that here in a second. Let me fast forward a little bit. And so see, there it is, I mark it. Here's the 50%, that's the first imbalance. I could have taken, gotten out at this low right here. That would have been fine, this little pullback low. Um, so we had this opening range gap here as well. Let me mark that. So we had this opening range gap here as well. And with this, price filled that gap all the way in. Right, you see that, it price filled it all the way back in. So now I'm waiting for it to pull back up in here and then go short. So here we go. Price is coming back up. I know exactly where my entry is. When price comes back up into this gap, my stop's going to be above this high and we have a fair value gap there. So I might as well put it on the top of this fair value gap. And my target's right here at this first imbalance in the discount. So let's watch the, let's watch the trade here. Just knocked my microphone off. Here we go. I entered and I took eight ticks right there. 17 ticks. Looks like about 17 ticks was my max heat on this trade. Very little. And look, that's coming off of yesterday's high as well. See that? Yesterday's high is this dotted line. Also coming off of yesterday's high. All right, so we throw my stop up there, throw my target at 803. Now, we're looking at about a 70-point trade 
shorting right here. Now, I'm looking at it again. And I'm like, you know what? Actually, because this wick is below the 50% in discount right here, right here is the lowest hanging fruit. That's kind of what I was pointing at. Right here would be the lowest hanging fruit if I put my target there. And then I noticed this little gap right here. This little fair value gap. So now I'm like, ooh, this actually right here <laughs> is the low hanging fruit. This is the first imbalance after equilibrium. So I said, oh crap, you know what? I saw that and I would hate for it to wick down here and then pull back up. And I, I don't have, I had all the confidence in the world it's going to keep going. But personally, I like to get in, get out, get my low hanging fruit. And I don't like to like for, a, a, you know, to be up 40 points and it go run all the way back against me. That's just me right now. You know, maybe later I'll hold them longer. But really, as my accounts get built up and cushion, then I could do stuff like that. But for now, you know, they're still they're They're building up, but <laughs> they're not, you know, way built up. So. So that's why I mark my target. And I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm like, okay, here we are. We're 80 ticks in profit. <clears throat> Fully expect price could trade up in this area. No problem. I'm okay with that. It doesn't though. So now this one, I'm like, oh, you know what? Let me move my target right up there. So you can see, let me back up a little bit. You see me kind of go over here with my mouse. Like, oh, I see this one now. So I move my target right up to this wick, which is the top of the fair value gap right here just below this low. So you can see me do that right here. <clears throat> like up, oh, there's a low. Oh, there's, there's an imbalance right there. Let me move it up. Cause I've seen it before. I've seen price before do this, hit that first imbalance and then run all the way back up and do a nice retracement and then come down. So, and that's fine. That's fine. You can sit there and hold that, but I just personally don't like to do that. So <clears throat> there we go. Run down, put my target up there real quick. It's still like a 50 point trade. So <laughs> boom, there we go. Target filled, never had to touch my stop. And then let's see, I just want to show what happens. So I did take this low right here. Fast forward a little bit and look, it never, it did not hit the target. It wicked down nicely, but it did not hit this target. And then look at this retracement all the way back. I mean, my entry is here, but it got very close to retracing back up to my entry. And like I said, I have every belief that it's going to run down. But do I really want to have all that go back up against me? Not really, not right now. Like I said, when my accounts are really, really built up with big cushion, okay, fine. Maybe. So that was that. That was my trade. That was my read. Now let me show you real quick on my chart here what happened the rest of the day. Ah. <clears throat> So this is the one minute, this was that move. In the grand scheme of things, I got in here and got out right here. And then look what happened. <laughs> ah, wrong button. And then look what happened. Price did keep going down. It hit that lower volume imbalance. And then it made its way to that area that I said that it could go to. So had I not taken that trade back here, I would have waited, waited, waited until it came down here to see if we get a market structure shift and we head back up to, to take the rest of this out to fill that. So as it came down, we never got that entry to go long until, like I said, I would have waited until we got down to this area and then wait for the market structure shift. What do you see here? 
What do you see right here in this area? We came down some consolidation, displacement up, right? What do you see right there? Took these highs, this high, took this high. I mean, nice displacement. Inverted this gap, came down here. But not only did it come down right there, now you have... I mean, you have this displacement up here. Could have got in here. Could have got in this one. You got another little one here. So like it's, it's showing you, okay, this is potentially reversing. So now, I mean, there's a lot of areas you could have got in here, right? And then look what happens for the rest of the day. Wow, then it ran all the way up here. And then it made its way up into that upper daily Fair value gap. <laughs> it's just so predictable. I mean, when you know what price should do, it's usually going to do it. If as long as you know, as long as you know. So, I mean, look how beautiful this is. It went all the way up. So that's my trade for CPI day. I'm still taking low hanging fruit. Not ashamed of it. I don't care. That's what I love to do. What it's done is get me multiple payouts in a row. I'm very consistent. My accounts are back above the threshold to pay out again to, to request payout. It's consistency. Taking the low hanging fruit has been super extremely consistent for me and high probability. So, all right. Well, that is my review for Wednesday, 9-11, September 11th, CPI day and hope you got something out of this that's just kind of how i'm looking at it how i've interpreted my studies of the 2022 mentorship from ict and uh the 2024 is amazing as well so hope everybody has a great day have a great west rest of your week in case if i don't have another video out i should like i said i want to have that other video with what i'm doing that's helped me with my discipline consistency and all that uh, with journaling and keeping stats. I mean, it's been great. So with that, I will see y'all next time. And as always, trade well, everybody. Yeah.